This is the book, the book of the life of a ballet company. Come with us on a journey to our past. The Oz scene here, however fantastic a fairy tale, cannot compare to the magical journey of the ballet company that has brought us together. Tulsa Ballet Arts, Tulsa Civic Ballet, Tulsa Ballet Theater, Tulsa Ballet. Within these four phases of ballet in Tulsa lie six decades of memories, 60 years. Where do you fit into this patchwork of effort, creativity, pain, and passion? Roman Jasinski and Moslin Larkin are well known. Mr. Jasinski said often, everything happened a miracle in my life. Well, Musya and Yasha were our first miracle. How Polish Yasha grew from abject poverty to a major ballet company's premier danseur is one miracle. How an Oklahoma-born daughter of a Russian mother and American Indian father joined that same company at age 15 is another. How they danced the world together, Europe, the Orient, South America, until the birth of their child, Roman, is an amazing story. What happened next was our miracle. Musia's mother had a thriving ballet school in Tulsa. She was growing older, and the Jasinskis wanted a settled home for their son. It sounded so placid. Just teach, just relax, after a lifetime of travel. Then came the next miracle. A newfound friend suggested, almost as an afterthought, why don't you gather some students together and give a little performance? That one little suggestion brought us to December 15, 1956. As an add-on to the celebrity series at Temple Israel, Tulsa Ballet Arts was born. Put yourself in the shoes of the Jasinskis for a moment. You are given a challenge. As professionals, you can easily pull together a program, but who will dance behind you? They pluck the best student dancers from four different studios and whip them into a semblance of order. All were total amateurs. All were scared to death, but it was a start. Within the month, Tulsa Ballet Arts was incorporated and the real training began. But the Jasinskis were new to town. Apart from personal friends, they knew no one influential. They had no money for costumes, for sets. There was already a thriving opera, symphony, and theater group in town. Who needed a ballet company? The early growing steps were small and uncertain. The company danced in church basements, on outdoor tennis courts, anywhere a few friends could gather a few more friends and build relationships and interest. This is where the Jasinski's ties to the professional world came to the fore. They called upon old friends, ballet stars of the highest caliber, who would come to this fledgling company and dance for nearly nothing, just to help out their ballet russe buddies. Alicia Markova and Margot Fontaine danced in front of raw recruits who had to learn how to fold hair into classicals and apply stage makeup. This thread of magnificent professionals continued into two decades. Performance by performance, they taught Tulsa audiences to expect ballet at its best. They inspired the young dancers grouped artistically behind them. Tulsa slowly, surprisingly, became a fixture on the national ballet map. Another early miracle came by chance. Shortly after their December debut, the Jasinskis visited a friend in New York who said, you guys are sitting on a gold mine. Five ballerinas were born in Oklahoma in the 1920s, each with American Indian blood. Your state's 50th anniversary is coming up next year. Do something. And so they did. The first Indian Ballerina Festival took place in Tulsa in 1957. All of these ballerinas had known each other as friends and competitors in the ballet world. When four of the five danced together in Tulsa's Old Lady of Brady, headlines in London extolled, Red Indian Queens of the Dance. Dance news crooned, oh, what a beautiful evening. Less than a year from its birth, Tulsa's baby ballet company was reviewed and admired coast to coast. And our next miracle occurred. Tulsa Civic Ballet found a sponsor. For eight years in the 60s, the Tulsa Pilot Club sponsored one performance a year, funding sets, costumes, publicity, and hiring the hall. In return, proceeds from these public performances funded its local charity, Dental Work for Children. This combination of teeth and tutus gave the fledgling company breathing space to develop a repertoire, build costumes, build an audience, train students, 
And most important of all, build the beginnings of financial support. The Pilot Club taught Tulsa, if you want a quality ballet company, you have to pay for it. It is a lesson our city supporters took to heart. By now we had a board of directors. We hired a company manager. We gained community funding. Volunteers sewed costumes in the Jasinski home. A high school teacher built sets in his spare time. It was a hand-to-mouth existence, but it kept us going and growing. Then we joined a nationwide movement of regional ballet companies that over the next couple of decades trained our dancers, exposed them to the best of their peers, showed them off at regional festivals, and watched them rise in the ranks until Tulsa Civic Ballet was one of only three companies in the entire nation to achieve national award status. The second Indian Ballerina Festival took place in 1967. There was huge hoopla here because of the premiere of the Four Moons Ballet, Indian ballerinas, Indian composer, Indian artist, an amalgam of old world ballet and Native American energy and identity. The entire ballet world sat up, took notice, wrote about Tulsa, Tulsans, and Tulsa's ballet company. Mr. Jasinski led the first Ford Foundation all boys ballet class west of the Mississippi, a major step forward in conservative Oklahoma. A surprising number of Tulsa boys went on to dance professionally because of Mr. J's example and inspiration. Fledgling students grew through the years to ballerina status. And finally, our young dancers excelled enough to carry the show by themselves. By 1978, Tulsa Ballet Theater had grown from an amateur civic ballet to a fully professional force to be reckoned with. We also took our cue from the community and began to give back. In Destination Discovery, our young dancers performed in gymnasiums and auditoriums in every high school throughout the city and its environs. Roman Jasinski's original choreography, year after year, challenged company dancers and gained credit throughout the country. Yasha started to choreograph because we had no money for big ballets. To his surprise, honor after honor followed his choreographic talents. There were major tours to the East Coast, West Coast, and center of the country. Our New York City debut had critics raving about our radiant dancing, clear, buoyant technique, and appetite for movement. As our dancers became known, they migrated to bigger companies in the U.S. and Europe, and dancers from far outside of Tulsa came here for the excitement of working with the Jays. That excitement included an extraordinary spate of ballet russe or early Balanchine revivals, including Balanchine's Lost Black Pearl, the Mozart Violin Concerto. The Jasinskis supplied the knowledge, the memory, and the trained and capable dancers. Members of the Tulsa community funded these long lost treasures. The ballet world applauded loudly. Ballet in Tulsa was time and again on the lips of the world. In 1991, Mr. Jasinski passed away, knowing that an old Tulsa school was even then being converted to studio, rehearsal, class, wardrobe, and warehouse space by a young Tulsa architect who once danced with Tulsa Civic Ballet. It was a new era led by the baby whose presence first brought the Jasinskis to Tulsa, Roman Larkin Jasinski. Roman danced with American Ballet Theater before becoming a principal with Cincinnati and Tulsa and concentrated on works by American choreographers. With Roman's retirement, the stage was set for the next series of miracles. It was time for the Italian tornado, Marcello Angelini and his ballerina wife, Daniela Busson. The fabric so lovingly woven by the Jasinskis took on a new luster under their successor. Marcello enjoyed a rich career as a dancer, being principal dancer and principal guest artist with 15 different companies around the world, from his native country of Italy to Germany, Switzerland, UK, Scotland, Canada, Chile, and the US. Marcello's vision and daring have expanded the Jasinskis ballet russe blend of old works and new. Without our classical roots, our company's edgy innovations would be impossible. Without contemporary works, our classics could freeze into museum pieces. Instead, Marcello tests the company's purest technique by passionately and meticulously restaging the 19th century classics 
and then challenges the company with the raw, innovative, powerful moves of modernism. His goal? To treat Tulsa audiences to the most significant masters of dance of past and present centuries, and to rival, yes, rival, the leading dance organizations of the world. And yet, we remain true to our past. As we have learned from our Ballet Russe roots, it is not enough to look backward. Imagination, innovation, creativity require space and time to be born, nurtured, and shared with the world. Here at Tulsa Ballet's headquarters is an intimate theater that annually offers creations at Studio K. Studio K was built as an ideal space to introduce completely new works created on our dancers by worldwide choreographers. It also hosts Chamber Works, showcases our second company, and provides a professional stage for our student performers. As well as an artist dreaming dreams, Marcello is a businessman. He asks for money, a lot of it, and uses it wisely. First one, then another, then a phalanx of patrons has come to approve his vision. They do the hard work of gathering funds, creating campaigns, supporting the plans of the board. The result is a broader, more relevant dance presence in the city of Tulsa, the state of Oklahoma, the USA, the world. In 2002, our company made its international debut at the Sintra Dance Festival in Portugal. El Seminario, an important national weekly publication called Our Tulsa Ballet Company, one of the best in the world. And that was just the beginning. Since, we have danced at the famed Joyce Theater in New York, the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., Seoul, South Korea, the capitals of Serbia and Croatia, and in six Italian cities, where critics called us one of the five most significant American ballet companies. There were more plans, more tasks, more mountains to climb. We wanted to help young dancers transition from academics to a professional career just as the Jasinskis did decades ago. That's how Tulsa Ballet 2 was born. TB2 is a small training company for exceptional young talents from all over the world. Today, TB2 tours regionally, augments large company productions, presents its own season, and performs dozens of educational programs for local children in our very own Studio K. Equally important, nine of our main company dancers, including soloists, came up through the TB2 ranks. While our professional company is our main window on the world, it is not the only one. In 2003, the SEM Group Center for Dance Education opened its doors to students. The same professional training that molded our dancers is now available to area children. Within mere years, we were acclaimed by area professionals the best ballet school in the region. In 2007, the center added 10,000 square feet of additional studio space, and we now have an in-studio and outreach program that serves some 5,000 elementary students annually. And that's not all. We now have two venues, the award-winning Hardesty Campus and the SEM Group Campus. The two centers today serve over 500 local students, with both facilities boasting performance space for public and educational performances. We have come full circle with a twist. Instead of Mr. Jasinski creating new works because he couldn't afford to use past classics, Marcello creates new works because they impact the future. Alone or in collaboration with other companies, Tulsa Ballet creates new works. Scenario, choreography, sets, costumes, music. It encourages its dancers to share their own choreographic dreams. It gives the best of them opportunities to show their works to the world. It has been a long time coming, but the company we now know has gone from wide-eyed amateur to one of the best in the world. 60 years, think of it, 60. Those who danced in those earlier days were indelibly marked by the experience. But more important, you were also the seed, the shoot, the blossom that nurtured the company that exists today. And those of you who never slipped a toe into a toe shoe but who supported us, funded the costumes, the choreographers, the classical and contemporary creations. You were the earth from which Tulsa Ballet grew. Glinda the Good and her Book of Oz know our past and our future. We hope and trust you are as pleased with the one and hopeful of the other as we are. Thank you for all of your efforts and love. <laughs>